Hi everybody, welcome to today's live tutorial. We're so excited to have you. Today, we are going to be talking about cool tone makeup. I'm gonna show you guys how I do an entire full face and do a cool tone look and still have it be so flattering and have life to the face. Before we get started, I want to introduce Mundy. Hello She's everyone. Gorgeous model, she's so <laughs> cute. We're so happy to have her in studio today. So we're gonna be doing a cool tone look on her today. We're gonna start with the eyes and then I will do the full face for you guys. We're mainly gonna be doing the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This is like the queen of cool tone palettes because all of the colors are so well thought out. They're all very cool tone, but they still have life to them, uh, which I love, they're very pretty. Um, so looking at Mundy, so in her skin, she has, I would say, kind of more yellow undertones and her eyes are blue with like teeny little flecks of gold, I would say. So Mundy could wear cool or warm. Um, she has beautiful gray hair, which is cool. And so we're gonna do, we're gonna play off of that today with our colors. Um, so this will be fun. You guys have had a lot of questions on cool tone looks because it, warm is so popular right now. I feel like that's most of the looks that you see online. So I'm excited to do cool tone for you today. So we're gonna start by giving, doing a little more love on Monday's skin today. We already did a lot of my usual prepping and now we're gonna add just a little bit of the Becca Skin Love Foundation. This blurs and brightens. So we're just gonna add a little bit kind of on the high points of the face. And Mundy has really great skin. Are you like really good about your skincare? Not at all, actually. <laughs> just <laughs> great genetics. It got better when I got older. Did Let's it? Just say that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice. Yeah. That's so good. I feel like that does happen for some people. Sometimes skin, like, it starts to get for a lot of people kind of more dry as you mm -hmm. get older, but that means you don't break out as much. Exactly. You don't have like the oil. So sometimes it's good. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Okay, so that I just did a little bit of that. I love that. And then another thing that um, my models and clients have really loved lately, this is by Dr. Brandt. This is called Needles No More, No More Baggage. So this is super great for the under eye area. It's tinted. It has like a little bit of a peach undertone, which is great because uh, most of us have a little bit of darkness under our eyes. You just see like... Um, the thin there, the skin there is thinner, so you're more likely to have little color casts. So this is really great, and this also really calms down the area, and is super great for depuffing. Which honestly, we all, we all <laughs> love that. Who doesn't love that? Okay, so we'll do a little bit of that, and then let's go on to the eyes. Um, I like to prep the eye area always before I go in with the um, the eye shadows. And I really, really love to use Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. So that's what we're gonna use today. We're gonna use, this is the Light Medium Honey. This is one of the lighter colors. And I usually just pull like a lighter, a lighter um, concealer shade for the eye area. If you match their skin exactly, um, it can look a little muddy when after you do the eyeshadow and stuff like that. So this is the one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna have Mundy close. I'm just gonna kind of lift the lid. So the reason I like to prep, it just creates a really nice even canvas. It covers up any discoloration on the lid or any little veins that show through or anything like that. And also this, the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer is a little bit mattifying. And so I really like that for my eyeshadow base. I feel like even though it's a concealer, it helps them stay longer. So I'm gonna do this and because it's a seal concealer, I can also conceal. So I'm gonna go in in this inner tear duct area. A lot of people have like a teeny bit of a blue undertone there. So the concealer will kind of help cover that up. Okay, and then I love, um, this is a Cosmetics brush. I really, really love these when I'm working with concealer. They're super soft and they do a great job of spreading the product around. And a lot of times, if you guys are new to my channel, I do live makeovers here. I have all different types of models. It's so fun. Um, but a lot of times I start with a couple things already done. We'll do the eyeshadow base because it's so basic, but I wanted to show you guys more steps today. Sometimes I love to do everything on camera. So I just go, the goal for this is to get it really thin. You don't want a lot of heaviness and a lot of layers on the eyes. That is a bummer. We don't want to add any texture and stuff like that. So. And this is pretty light, so we're gonna stick with that. And then I like to set it, even though it's a little bit mattifying, like I said, I like to do just a really light wash of Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. So we're just gonna grab like a fluffy brush. 
just put like a little bit little bit on i'm gonna have many clothes so this is gonna keep it from creasing so it's gonna set it the eyeshadows are gonna blend a lot smoother on the lid and like i said it will keep it from creasing okay so let's move in to our shadows so we're gonna open this up i'm gonna hold it by monday's face so you guys can see on camera yay <laughs> is that in focus kelly so we're going to start with the transition shade. So there's like a couple in this palette that I really love for that. This one I know would be so stunning on Monday because it has a little, it's like really the only shade in here that has like a teeny bit of warmth. It's more neutral than like cool. Like it could pull cool or it could pull warm. So this would be really flattering with her eyes. But I think I'm going to play, I think I want to stay more cool with Monday today so you guys can see. So we're going to use this one right here and it's actually labeled crease. So in this particular palette, Natasha labeled the colors where she would put them, which is kind of fun. So we're going to use the one that she said crease. So I just like to use a big fluffy brush. Okay, go ahead and close. And I'm just gonna work this into the crease area. And what's so fun doing makeup on people is every eyeshadow pulls differently depending on different people's skin tones and stuff like that. So this is pulling definitely like a true cool on Monday. It's gonna be really pretty. I have found this more with warm shadows. If you're watching this video um, and you clicked on it for cool makeup because you're a true cool tone, anything warm will probably pull like more orange on you than other people. So you would love a palette like the Natasha Denona that's just more very true neutrals and true cools. So we're just gonna work this under the crease a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to just open Mundy's eyes a little bit. So I wanna give her a little bit of lift by bringing the color up here and a little bit of like openness so her eyes look really bright and beautiful. So we're gonna put a little bit of the crease color up in here. Perfect. See how that already just kind of like gave her eyes a little bit of definition. She has very pretty eyes. And Mundy, you were, you were telling me before we started, you don't really wear makeup, I right? I don't wear makeup. But I love that she's stunning. She does Only on special it. occasions. Yeah. Go ahead and close. Makeup is fun. I'm going to turn you just a little bit. And that's what I always say. Like, nobody needs makeup. It's just fun if you want to wear it. If you don't, like, I love it. And honestly, Monday, that's probably partly why your skin is so good. I feel like that's the downside of makeup. It really is. actually it's probably just not is great true. I never really have worn makeup. <laughs> you I didn't? Was, I was even in a beauty pageant. Without any makeup. <gasps> wow. I wore mascara. You but, did? <laughs> You're a true beauty. First runner up. <laughs> oh Yay. my gosh, that's awesome. That's really cool. I can't cool, believe I confessed that on camera. That no, that's amazing. One of the stupider things I did in my life. <laughs> wait, wait, why? I feel like that's awesome. I did it as a challenge, actually. Like a dare? Well, kind of a challenge? Like. Sort of. I had these guy friends, and they used to hound me about wearing makeup and wearing stylish clothes and that just wasn't me and so to prove to them that I didn't need any of that stuff I joined a beauty contest is that, that is, the weirdest that's like thing the, no it's like the best thing I've and ever and then when I really placed funny. they were all shocked they were that all is, shocked well you're stunning like it was I'm, pretty funny I'm sure that's it was back not when shocking was that she placed but thin and in high school so oh yeah. in high school okay I'm gonna turn you slightly and have okay. you close your eyes perfect that is the cutest thing I have ever heard. Because pageants are known for like, oh, they go glam. Because it's staged top. makeup, right? Yes. Like you're on oh, stage yeah. and there's all these lights. So you almost yeah. like to look, even like yourself, you need like a ton of makeup. So I just love that. Mascara. That's, that's all fabulous. I, wore. I didn't even wear lipstick. Really? <laughs> that is so funny. I'm sort it. of very real. <laughs> no, I love it. That's so great. I'm sure a lot of people can relate. That's so cool. Okay, so I am loving the way this is looking. I just want to make sure the eyes are even. So this is a really good trick. So to get um, to get your eyes to have a little bit of a lift, a little bit more openness, it's really great to get some color on the crease right here. Um, because people's natural creases, that's where we're all taught to apply like your crease color, right, is in your crease. But sometimes your crease isn't where is ideal for your face if that makes sense so on monday i think it's gonna really open up her eyes and really be pretty like i said to place it a little bit above the crease it's gonna kind of give her a new crease if you will <laughs> as long as you can take that puffy away that's up there <laughs> no it's great i have those puffy eyes 
No, they're totally not. Big genetics they look for great. that. <laughs> well, they look great. You have stunning, like, blue eyes. They're so pretty. Do you always get compliments on them? I do. And depending on what I wear, they change colors. Isn't that sometimes funny? people say they're green. Yeah. People say that a lot. Like, people with light eyes, mm -hmm. like, people will mm -hmm. always tell you, like, they're different colors, depending, like you said, what you wear. Which is like, it's the color in your clothes, right? Like if you yes. guys watching, like mm -hmm. if it's like if you wear a blue top, there'll be mm -hmm. one color. If you wear, you know, brown, maybe they'll look more green mm -hmm. or something like that. But that's essentially like makeup, right? Like we're playing with color and so you can kind of alter your features. So we're doing sort of a very monochromatic look on Monday today. She has beautiful, like full gray hair. And so we're playing with all these cool tones and it's really going to like sort of emphasize all that. But if we were to do... Anything with gold in it. So if you want your blue to stand out, anything with like a yellow or a, a orange undertone will really, really, really make the eyes look blue. So you can kind of pick your feature you want to play up. So fun. Okay, so we're going to go back into this color and we're just going to do like a lid color. I actually feel like this is the perfect crease for Monday. I don't think we really need to darken it up. I actually want to keep things pretty natural today. So Monday doesn't wear makeup, so this is full glam for her. <laughs> but for me, <laughs> this is going to be sort of more nat like a moderate look, like an everyday glam because we're probably going to do lashes and stuff like that. If that's okay with Monday, we'll of ask course. her in a second. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So we're going to do a lid color. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I feel like Monday's eyes are perfect and beautiful, but because she has mentioned she feels like they're a little bit puffy, we're going to stay away from the shimmers. We're going to use matte because that will kind of keep things receded. It won't emphasize texture, but you absolutely could. Don't feel pigeonholed in anything like you can't wear shimmers at this or whatever, but we're going to do matte because that will absolutely be very flattering. So um, we are going to go into this color and this is actually called transition, but we're not going to use it as a transition color. We're going to do it just right on her lid and I'm going to kind of turn it so you guys can see better. So this is a true cool. This is like a very light, true cool color. Um, so be careful. It will be overwhelming if you put on a lot. So because I want to stay more natural, I don't want it to be too opaque if that makes sense, but I am going to use a flat shader brush. Go ahead and close. When you use a flat brush, it's really good for like pressing on shadow. When you use a fluffy brush, it's going to be a little bit more sheer and a little bit more blended. So I'm just going to kind of do one coat of this and I'm, then I'm going to take a fluffy brush and um, sort of blend it out. Honestly though, the Natasha shadows, the Natasha Donona shadows, they just blend out super, super well for me. Like with some brands, when I do this technique and I press it in, I'll need to blend out the edges like I just said I was going to do, but actually just kind of working it in with that flat brush, it's looking pretty blended to me. But see how like this color, I feel like if you packed on a lot of it, it's kind of like a gray. Like it's just sort of like a light brown based gray. So it can be over an overpowering of a tone if you were to go in really, really heavy with it. So I'm being more moderate with it, if that makes sense. But it's a fun shade. I really like it. If you wanted to do like a silvery look or something and go like very glam with this palette, this is a really good color for your transition area, your crease area, something like that. It's a really good sort of gray based grays. Honestly, cool tones are really hard to formulate because even a cool tone person, your skin still has a little bit of warmth to it. Like our blood is all red. Like <laughs> that's kind of more warm than cool if that makes sense some people have like a little bit more of blue undertone or something like that but you still need life in your cool tone so that's really why I like this palette in particular okay we're gonna do a little bit of tight leaning on Monday because for blue eyes or light eyes honestly any color the tight lighting really brings like a pop to them so we're gonna do a black tight lane and I've I've really been liking the Anastasia waterproof cream color this is the black so this is what I like to use for tight lining so I'm going to grab a little disposable spatula. So when you are, because I know, I feel like I have half and half that watch my channel. A lot of you guys are makeup artists. A lot of you guys just love makeup or whatever, wanting to learn. Um, when you are a makeup artist, d absolutely disposables. Like you can't dip your brush in a product and then use it again on somebody else. It has to be new for everybody. So I like the little disposable ones. I also have the stainless steel spatula ones that you can disinfect too. So. Lately, I've been doing disposables, but I used to do more of the stainless steel. So we're going to put it on this guy. 
And then we're just gonna take a little angled brush. I want an Anastasia one if I can find it, yes. Okay, so this is an Anastasia angled brush. This one I think is number 11, nope, 7B. And then we're just gonna tight line Monday's pretty, pretty eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna have you look down and I'm just gonna lift your lid a little bit and I'm going to do a line of liner right under all your lashes. And you have nice thick lashes. You're very pretty. She's being good. She knows she can't talk when I'm like near her eye with a <laughs> brush. <laughs> so if you guys are live, um, we have a live chat. So say hello, say hi to Pretty Monday. Um, and then if you have any questions or anything, go ahead and drop them now because now is a good time. Um, to ask down. them. I'm yes, down, right? down. I forgot. No, you're <laughs> totally good. So down, and then I'm going to come up this way. I mean, you can look wherever. The reason I have you look down is so your little kind of eyeball is out of the way, and you're not like watching the brush <laughs> come come at you. Not not the funnest thing. I'm going to pull up. Make sure the chat's pulled up for you guys. I always load it before we start, but I then my phone like resets or something. Okay, live chat. Hi guys. Hi Tori. Okay, we already have comments. I love how lifted and open her eyes look already. The magic of makeup, right? The placement is like so key and that's what I love kind of showing you guys. So down again, Wendy, good. And then it really all comes together once we get the lashes on and everything. That's kind of a thing like, people always ask me, go ahead and look down, if you should do eyes first or like skin first. I like on clients, I like to do eyes first. Um, it doesn't matter. But like one thing I've noticed when I was a newer makeup artist, I would do face first always and then do eyes. And because, because I was newer, I wasn't as good as reading people's faces and really envisioning what it's gonna look like. When you do the eyes first, it's kind of hard to see how it's all gonna come together because it just looks like a little bit off, right? Until your whole face is done. Um, especially before you have on lashes and everything like that. So if you're newer to makeup and you're trying things and you're not loving it, maybe try doing your face first. Go ahead and close now, Monday, because then you're working with like a blank canvas and you can sort of see your features come to life. When I do my own makeup, if I am in a hurry, I do my face first because then I don't spend as much time on my eyes. I just, it's like I already kind of feel complete. So I just like throw something on really quick, so. Anyways, fun little tip, play around with that. Okay, so I'm just doing a really thin line on Monday. How are you doing? I'm great. Good, you're doing so good. Is it so weird to have somebody like prod around? Have you worn eyeliner ever? Uh, n no. Really? I was gonna say there was <laughs> a period like of time in high school maybe, but I don't really think so. No, I don't well, think so. Well, yay, today's the new <laughs> I told day. you I've never really worn makeup. <laughs> Go ahead and close. Well, it's real, I'm excited for her to see the eyeliner. Well, I did tell you before I have allergies. And so oh, yeah. when you have allergies, you're sneezing and your eyes are running. And so yeah. I always, you know, you're always wiping your face and your eyes. And yeah. No, absolutely. So you don't want to be like smearing exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah. So it just, it got to a point <laughs> when I was younger, I just was like, no. Yeah, yeah, no, I love it. Well, you don't need it, but it's fun. It'll be fun for today. So we'll do a little bit of liner and then... Um, Whenever anybody doesn't usually wear makeup and or, so you're both, they have allergies, their eyes are going to get like a little bit watery when you're prodding them because they're just like, they're protective of themselves. They're like, look, I'm sensitive. Like, get away from me. And so what I'll do is like, we'll kind of see how she does with the eyeliner and I might give her a break and then come back and do lashes. <laughs> we'll see. But be aware of that if you're working on clients. And actually, true, I have found that people with like light eyes are also more sensitive. It's true. So you're it's just true. you're the triple threat. You I, al the I always have to wear sunglasses. It's my yeah, even yeah, my yeah. eye doctor told me that because yeah. you just are super sensitive. Isn't that so funny? I wear sunglasses when it's dark outside. Really, you're just if way I'm out sensitive. walking because the air. Oh, Otherwise, my yeah. eyes will run and run and run down my face. You'd think I'd be crying. That's funny. What about like you cut onions? Is it just game over? Game over. <laughs> Do you know it's so most vegetables though? <laughs> just everything. I'm just, so a, I'm, just I'm allergic to every tree, every oh, bush, every everything that's, that's in the sad. air. So days like today, they're really windy. Oh, you live in the wrong yeah. area. Oh, We're I in, do live in the wrong area. You're right. We're in Southern California, so perfect weather, right? But it gets like windy. So for people like windy, it's sad. It's very yeah. <laughs> You're like windy I days are bad snow. days. Mm -hmm. That is so funny. 
case something so funny and random about cutting onions. They had never, my whole life, I'm like, I don't cut. Like, why are you people all such babies? Like, I'm fine when I cut onions. And then I got LASIK eye surgery, so I didn't uh-huh. wear contacts anymore. And now I cry like a baby. Like, <laughs> I think when you wear contacts, it's sort of, it's like a little shield on your eyes. So there it must be like your iris or whatever that's sensitive, like not the whites. Because now I, I'm not lying. I wear like swimming goggles. Like I have a pair in my cupboard, so when I cut onions, that's the best. <laughs> my sister taught me. <laughs> I just wear like goggles because I don't want to cry. Want to mess up her makeup, right? Okay. Um, now what I'm going to do, we're gonna give her eyes a break, but I'm gonna kind of clean up the area. So what I like to do is um, I like to give the eyes further a further lift. This is another reason I like to do eyes first. So we're gonna kind of clean up under this area, and I'll show you how I sculpt the eye. So I'm just gonna use this my cellar water. I love the brand Bioderma. It's my fave. I get um, the I think I get the sensitive one. Yeah, I get the one for sensitive skin. It's a gentle product. It doesn't really have any like ingredients like if you were to get the normal one, but just because I use it on so many faces, like if I get somebody like Mundy who just has sensitive eyes, I know I'm safe. So I only use the sensitive and it works so good. Like it still gets all the makeup off that I need. So if you need to close Mundy, you can. This is bothering you. So I'm just going to clean up any fallout under her eyes. We really didn't have any. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go at the corner of her eyes, slightly below it, I don't wanna lift too much, and then I'm gonna go up and out. And we're just gonna clean up the eyeshadow. Sometimes, depending on the eye shape, I swipe in, because I feel like I can get the skin flatter. So you can swipe in or you can swipe out. But if you can see, check out that little line that we just did, we're gonna add some concealer, but it's, it's like this. Does that make sense? So up and out, don't go straight or you won't give the eyes a lift. You need to be lifted a little bit, and that's gonna lift the eye area, and it's magic. So I love it. Okay, we're just gonna clean up under here. And a lot of times when I use this gel eyeliner and I tight line, you're gonna get a little bit of a transfer to the um, the bottom lash line. And sometimes that's fine and I love it, but sometimes I wipe it away. I think on Monday I'm gonna kind of clean up that area. So I'm gonna take a baby little Q-tip. I like I love Q-tips. I have like an assortment of sizes. So I'm gonna use my little baby ones. These ones I think I got from like my makeup distributor, like the beauty supply store, because they're tiny, they look little mini, but they're really good for the eye area. So I'm gonna have Mundy look up, just sort of swipe under that area. It's okay if there's like a little bit of color. How you doing? Good. Good. You're doing great for never like being <laughs> prodded at, like <laughs> you're doing Kinda awesome. Fun. What's the hubby gonna say when he like, Sees it. Does he know you're getting your makeup yes, done? Yes, he okay. does. I think he'll be surprised. Aww, he'll probably fun. want me to look like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like guys love natural. He'll probably be like, you look so beautiful, but like, I love you as you are. Like, I feel like that's all guys. <laughs> only the good ones. Only, only the good guys say that. <laughs> I'm sure your husband's one of the good ones. Okay, so we're going to come back to eyes because we're going to do lashes and th- we're going to go very natural on Monday, but they're so amazing. They're going to further like give life to her eyes. We're going to do skin right now. Um, so I mixed a couple things from Monday before we started. Let me get this out of the way. Throw away my little um, eyeliner stick because I don't want to get that anywhere. Okay. So we are going to, I'm gonna use a beauty sponge today. So we mixed up her foundation color. And like I said, I feel like she has kind of more yellow undertones. So I did, I mixed a couple things like with the yellow base, but they all were NARS. So NARS Natural Radiant Long Wear Foundation, my fave currently. So we're just gonna do, I'm gonna use the Beauty Blender because I really like the texture of muddy skin and there's really only a couple areas I want to have sort of more coverage than the other, but I actually want to go pretty light. So here's the thing. If you have never worn foundation or you're working on a client who really doesn't wear foundation, they're j- you have to be careful. You have to go so light because foundation, although it smooths everything out and makes your skin look flawless, it still will add a little bit of texture or enhance certain things on the face. So. That, I think that's the thing people are most aware of when you've never worn makeup and you wear foundation. That's, I think, what feels like a lot. Yeah. Even, yeah, do you agree? Yeah. Like, even more so than throwing on a lot of eyeliner on somebody, I feel like if you go really heavy on the face, they're like, oh, like, <laughs> they don't feel like themselves. So we're going to go pretty light with Mundy. I like, I used to use beauty sponges all the time. Um, 
but it just got expensive because I either like give it to the client after or I throw it away if I forget to give it to them because I don't reuse sponges on on clients. So if you would like it, Mindy, it's all your. It's oh, brand thanks. new. It's all yours. Bonus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're the. I love them. <laughs> They're so good. For me, I have a drawer full. I have like ten of them, so I'll use like one a day, and then every Sunday I wash my makeup brushes, so I'll wash my little things, so like everyone's clean. Because I have sensitive skin, I'm like prone to breakouts, so I don't like to use my beauty blender twice in a row. If I can help it on myself. Okay, so just honestly, usually like kind of this area of the cheeks is where people need a little bit more coverage. I think it's where like the sun hits and stuff like that. So sometimes around the nose. So I found this on the oh, web. Siri think my watch thinks I'm talking to her. <laughs> Excuse you, Siri. <laughs> That's funny. She does that all the time lately. Anyways. I've been wearing my watch every day because I've been working out. I like don't work out. I haven't worked out in years, but this month I work out every day and it's so fun. Oh, way <laughs> to go. It's the worst when you do like an arm day, then you're doing someone's makeup and you're like, oh, my arm is so <laughs> tired. I can't even bounce the sponge on your face. No, it's good. So this is looking so great. So the Beauty Blender, the reason I like it is it really, really gets in there and it makes things look very airbrushed and very flawless. But because it's a sponge, it also sort of absorbs things as you go too. So I feel like it gets you this great balance of having a good coverage on the skin, but it sort of absorbs the excess so it's not going to be too heavy. In this NARS um, Radiant Foundation, it's although it's great coverage, it's very lightweight. Like one thing the models will always say to me is like, oh, that feels like so light. I think especially because I'm really like going in and blending it on them. They're like, oh, she's like working so long on my face. It should feel really heavy. But generally people say it feels light. Actually, that's all they say. But or <laughs> if it doesn't, they say nothing. I don't know. No one's ever told me it doesn't feel. But I get that. Um, I get that feedback a lot. Um, if you notice, I'm definitely staying away from the eye area. I like a complete different texture under the eye area. So I don't go in with foundation under that area usually not usually always the the under air eye under eye area the skin is thinner it just needs more love it's going to move when our face moves so i like to use a different concealer that's more created for the under eye area so one that i really love is the nars natural radiance foundation so i think we're going to do cream brulee i think that's going to be good um, oh, do we get to eat it too? Uh, right? Mm, that would be delicious. delicious. I know all makeup has like <laughs> food names. That's just wrong. Not all. A lot. <laughs> That's funny. Like I think the concealer one above that is called custard. That'd be good too. Okay. So let's see how this looks on her. That's a good matte. I want to, that's a little bit lighter. I'm going to darken it up a little bit. With Monday today, I want to more match her tone. I don't really want to lighten the under eye area. I feel like it will be most flattering to match it. So we're going to use actually custard. So we're going to use all the foods on your face today. Custard might be a really good match for you. And then either I'll do straight custard or I'll, meet, I'll mix cream brulee and custard. And I say the shade names because I feel like when people watch that have a similar coloring to my models, they like to know the shade names that I use. So I will let you guys know. Okay, so again, I'm using the it Cosmetics brush. It's just a new one, a clean one. I just really, really love it for concealing work. So what I like to do first, if I'm doing a, um, a concealer that matches that's not, we're not highlighting, right? We're matching her skin tone, so we're just concealing with the concealer, we're not brightening. I like to go in and tackle the areas that I want to really get a little color corrected or be concealed or whatever, so I'll start in that area. And then when there's not much left on my brush, if you need to blink and stuff, Monday, you can. It will not mess me up. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good and stoic, you're just doing great. And then when there's not a lot left on my brush, I like to go in this area right here. So this area right here is where I really don't like to get a lot of product. It just looks heavy. It's unnecessary. And generally this area right there, it really doesn't need color correcting or concealing. But if you leave it completely alone, it, the tone can be kind of off because usually this area is a little bit more pink than the other areas of the face. Anyway, so that's what I like to do. 
keeping that natural. So also I want to get up a little bit closer. So I'm just going to kind of turn my brush sideways and dip the very edge and just get right up under there because that area has a little bit of pink to it that I want to conceal. And that happens so like so often a lot of us have like a little bit of pink around our eyes, which is actually really pretty if you're like Monday and you don't wear a lot of makeup because it kind of looks like eyeshadow and I love <laughs> it. But for this look, I want to conceal it. So see the I'll face report. See the subtle difference? We're going light with the concealer because this is a more natural glam look. We're not like full coverage covering everything. Like I want it to still look like skin and to still have life into it. And so I'm just sort of like enhancing things, concealing a little bit here and there. So there's just like a nice, nice little coverage. And I'm pretty much just using custard at this point for those of you that like to know the shade names. I didn't really use too much cream brulee. I felt like custard was a good match for the face. You're really doing great at getting your, I feel like the eyes is the most sensitive for when I go in and sort of like play around. Okay, perfect, perfect. I'm gonna grab another one of my little pointy Q-tips. Just clean up under the eye a little bit and we do have some comments. I will get to those. Hi, Memory. Oh, that's pretty. Am I saying it right? Memory? Is that your name? That's that, really pretty. That's my is daughter. That your, is that your daughter? <laughs> Aww. That's a pretty name. It's such a pretty that's name. So yeah. Pretty. Oh, cute. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Your daughter is watching, supporting you. <laughs> she says, it's subtle, but it makes such a difference without being too glam. Is this the first time Memory will see you with makeup on? No, memory okay. probably was at weddings. Okay. And oh, yeah. You said, you said events yeah. and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes okay. on Sunday, if I don't want people to think I'm too scary looking. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but always very subtle and never yeah. glam at all. At all. Well, this will be fun. Glam. <laughs> yeah, this is glam because we're hitting all the features. But like I said, we're still pretty natural. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to set Monday's under eye area. So I'm going to have her look up. This is also Laura Mercier translucent powder. I'm just doing a light dusting. And the reason I'm doing this now is because I don't want the concealer to crease. The NARS Creamy Radiance Concealer, it's more creamy than the Tarte Shape Tape, so it doesn't mattify as quickly or really if ever. So if you tend to crease, I like to set it, and I like to actually set it pretty soon before it does crease. But you, do you get, you don't really get oily, right? Are you kind of really. more dry? Yeah. Okay. So we don't really need to, we don't need to control oil. I may lightly set things. So when I'm going cool tone, a lot of you guys have asked me what I like to do um, for contouring and stuff like that if I'm going with a cool tone because a lot of times the way I like to contour, I like to use a more neutral contour versus cool and also with like a hint of warmth in it, just kind of do like that bronzy contoured look. So there obviously are cool contours and I like to do those too, but today the, what I want to do since we're kind of going for like a more natural glam is to not really bronze so much, but more focus on like a colorful blush and like giving life to the face that way. So I'm gonna use the Senna blush palette. It's so good. And I think we're gonna go, let's go with the shade Dusty Rose. I think that is one of the more like cool tones in this palette. She has kind of a variety of shades. No, Dusty Rose is looking warm to me. Let's see. Their shade names don't always match up with what they are. I'll just hold it up and look. <laughs> we'll do, I think this is called Natural Rose. So that one you can kind of see. It's more of like a, a neutral pink. So in this one, like you can tell, has more warmth in it. So we'll stick with this one today. And we will pull that out. Okay. Oh, hi, Angelique. She says, hi, I'm late, but I love that you are doing cool tones today. I know, yay. Everyone gets excited for cool tones because we don't do them too much. Hi, Megan. Um, and then memories that the eyeliner makes your eyes pop. All right. Okay, we're gonna do some blush. So I really love cream blushes. They're really, really, um, they're really great for not adding texture and looking very natural. You can really build up your color and they still are gonna look like skin. Powder blushes can look a little bit heavy or a little bit made up. Um, and just add texture to the face, but cream blushes are so great. So I really love them. So what I like to do when I'm not doing like a heavy contour or anything like that, I will tend to go more on the apples, 
but I generally will do like a little bit above the apple. So the, ap the actual apple is going to be like right here, right? But I want to give the face a little bit of a lift. So I'm going to do sort of above the apple and up a little bit on the cheeks. I feel like that will be really pretty. And I cream blush works best with your finger because your finger, the texture of the skin is very, not similar, but it works very much so like a beauty blender, like if you were to use a sponge. Um, so sometimes I will do that, but what I like about the fingers is they have natural warmth to them, which works really great when you're doing a cream or a liquid blush because it's gonna help melt it into the skin and it's really gonna um, melt into your foundation and just look so natural, like you're glowing from within. So I'm really into that. So that's what I like to do. And then you can kind of alter your placement. Like I don't want it to go up really up into the eye area. I want that to be blended. So I'm taking my concealer brush that has the color on it and just sort of going over the top. This is a pretty color. Do you wear, do you like pink? Do you wear pinks ever? Um, often. Okay, so you do? Yeah. Are you a blush girl when you do wear your makeup? Not really. What do you tend, what are your go-tos? Like your quick face, you're like, okay, I want to throw something on, I have something. I usually do eyes. Eyes. So yeah. So, never false eyelashes though, okay. just mascara usually, and um, yeah, I usually just my eyes. <laughs> so fun. So mascara and eyeshadow, mm -hmm. not eyeliner you Not said. really eyeliner. Mm -mm. What eyeshadow tones do you like to do? Uh, usually stick with a smoke, more of a smoky, you know, so your browns and... Yeah. Those Every once in a while, I do crazy and do blue, but yeah, that's so blue 70s. Blue's <laughs> like kind of having a moment, though. Like there have been, like, the cool tone palettes yes. usually come out. There's, like, a lot of blues. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. So I really like the way that's looking. I'm going to do brows and then lashes. So for brows, I don't want, because do you ever do brows? No. No. Okay. So <laughs> I don't want to I'm give lucky her... if they. I'm lucky if they ever get plucked. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Well, Otherwise you have they a take great over my shape. face. <laughs> that's really funny. I like. Um, I like her natural brow. They have a good shape. Um, they're quite light. They're similar in tone to like the lighter parts mm -hmm. of her hair. So brow. Okay, guys. Brows and skin are like what people notice when you're doing their makeup, and they've never worn it. Well, I keep saying never. She wears it. <laughs> like not a lot. Um, so if I was to give Monday like this perfect sculpted brow, she'd be like, oh my gosh, like that's so heavy. So I want it to be really natural. So what I like to do when I go natural is I just use a pencil and this is the shade blonde. We could do blonde or taupe, but blonde is the lightest. And what I'm going to do is just essentially shape what she already has. So I'm going to go and just lightly sculpt out the brow. So I like to do that underneath and get that little line. And then I'm just going to go up and just draw in little hairs really lightly the blonde pencil is a little bit more warm I didn't pull my taupe out today taupe would be a good one if you want to be like a true cool tone but I'm going to show you how I correct that I'm not worried about it I'd actually rather it be lighter like this blonde one and then I'll color correct in a second with powder so I'm just giving like her brows like a little bit of shape like a little bit of life is all we are doing um, oftentimes I feel if somebody has a really light brow and you go in and you do eyeliner and then you do lashes like we're going to do, the face doesn't feel as balanced if you don't give that brows a little bit of love. You definitely don't need to go too dark. I feel like brows are very natural right now, the trend, like full and natural and fluffy and wispy. So you don't really need to go too crazy, but I definitely like to address them. Okay. So, and it depends. Sometimes, like, when I get a client in the chair, I'll totally, if they're okay with it and they want to, I will, like, pluck the brows and, like, sculpt them and stuff like that. But you don't always need to. Sometimes just shaping them a little bit will help out. But you do have, like, a nice natural shape. Okay. So that is looking good. Now we're going to color correct it with a powder. I love I love Anastasia for brows. I used her brow wizzes, and then I really like her palette. So... This is the Pro Palette. I like it because it has all the colors, um, but they do shell, sell these in individual pans if you just want to use one shade. So I'm gonna use like a fluffy, not a fluffy, a um, angled brush. But this one's like a little bit more fluffy, like wider than the one I was doing eyeliner with. So we're gonna go, like I said, the blonde pencil is like a tiny bit more warm. Um, so I'm going to go in with like a cool eyeshadow. So I like this lighter one in the medium of brown. It almost looks like kind of gray. So I'm going to go in with that. 
and just top the pencil and it's going to cool it down a little bit. It's also going to darken it a little bit too, but that's okay. Just lightly, lightly fill it in. And I'm doing, with the powder, I'm doing more of like a spreading motion with the pencil. I did more like little hair strokes. So this is more like shading, like the pencil's like drawing in your little hairs and this one's more like color correcting and shading and setting the pencil. But you can do both. The, a lot of the palettes come with like a little wax and you can dip your brush into the wax and then go into the powder and then it makes it really easy. You can draw on like little hairs and stuff like that. So you really can kind of do everything with any brow product. This is just the way I generally like to do it. And kind of brush it out. Okay, so these are looking nice. And then on this one, try to get them even basically Everyone's natural brows, like, have you heard the saying, like, brows are sisters, not twins? No, you heard, no that? but that makes sense. That's like the saying in makeup, because no, like, yours are actually pretty even, but pretty much nobody's face is, like, symmetrical, so you, the brows are never the same, so you just do your best to get them similar. I think that's why brows are hard for people to do when they're learning to do makeup. They're like, oh, because you can't just follow your natural shape. You have to kind of correct them. So in, I took a photography class in high school and we were talking about like symmetry and faces and stuff like that. And our teacher said that like the only person with a symmetrical face was Denzel Washington. <laughs> He's like, he has the perfect face, guys. So we had to like look at his face and stuff. It was funny. And maybe Halle Berry. I feel like there was one girl with like a symmetrical face. So that's what we try to do in makeup. It's like you try to make things sym symmetrical that's what plastic surgeons do. They try to bring like symmetry. That's like the goal of <laughs> altering things. <laughs> Maybe it's not supposed to be symmetrical. Oh yeah, it's totally fine. Maybe it's, it's just not. fine. Oh, it is absolutely <laughs> fine. You like great character, right? Right. <laughs> okay, so that is looking good. So I'm I'm gonna do the lashes now. So I pulled a couple lashes for. Monday today, but I think what I'm going to do is the D Wispies. These are flared on the end, um, and they're super, super natural, but I like them because they're like a little bit thick at the base. They'll give her eyes like a little bit of a pop, but they're quite short for a false lash, which I like for people, um, or I like when I'm doing like a more natural look or if somebody hasn't worn false lashes really often or ever, these are really good. So I like the Ardell brand or... Um, this brand I got from Amazon. So Ardell, they're Demi Wispies. I don't think we have a, a PNG for you to throw up, Kelly. Um, but from Amazon, they're D Wispies. So I'll link them for you guys. Okay, let this glue dry. Let's say hello. Okay, oh, Angelique, she said, I bought the NARS liquid blush because you use them and I love it. Oh, yay! Oh, I'm so glad. It's like my fave. I love it. And then she said, I appreciate that you use mostly the same favorite products that you like. Yeah, I mean, this is like I'll buy new things and try them and test them out. But like essentially like what I show you guys is like what I love. Like it's what I would really use on a client. So I feel like that's more relatable than channels that use like a new thing. It's, I don't know. It's fun. I like both, but I use what I love. Okay. Just looking for my little tweezers to put on the lashes and I can't find them. So I'm going to use this is like a lash applicator. I think this needs like a second more of drying. I'll grab another. Okay. Oh, hi, Shannon. She says it's beautifully natural looking. Gorgeous with her lovely hair and blue eyes. Yes, I I love cool tones. They're really pretty. They're very flattering. They're fun to do. Shannon's probably my gorgeous daughter-in-law. Oh, Shannon. <laughs> yeah. Shannon Taylor. Yep. Oh, that'd welcome. be the one. Oh, the whole fam's <laughs> here to support. I love that. Or some of them. I don't know. Okay, go ahead and look down, but don't close. But if you need to blink and stuff like that, that's okay. Okay, so we are just going to get this. I'm just lifting Mundy's lid a little bit, and I'm just pushing this right against her lash line. Oh, good. And the glue is pretty much perfect. You really need the sweet spot of the glue where it's tacky. 
but not too dry yet. But look how pretty, like these lashes, they're quite short for a false lash. If you weren't have worn false lashes before, they're usually pretty long because that's why people want them. But these are pretty short. But they're very, very natural. I love them. But look, there's something about black against blue eyes. So like black lashes, black liner, they just make the blue like really intense. So that's very pretty. Okay. I am just going to get this one. And okay, the Demi Wispies, guys, if you're new to lashes, um, the D Wispies or Demi Wispies, you almost never need to cut them. So I, I think for a lot of people when you're new to lashes, like you have to trim the lash that you buy to fit your eye. And that's like a little bit overwhelming. But the D Wispies, because they're so natural, they're just smaller than a lot of false lashes. And so I hardly ever have to trim them for people. So if you want an easy lash, the D Wispies are so, so good. So I feel like these look really great on Mendy because she doesn't have very deep set eyes, but if someone had really deep set eyes, would these work? Okay, so Kelly, Kelly asked a question. I don't know if you guys can hear her in the corner, but she said, Kelly said these look so good on Mendy, but Mendy has, um, she doesn't have deep set eyes. So Kelly's asking if they would look good on somebody with deep set eyes. So deep set eyes, um, things look shorter than they do. So deep set eyes, you can go a little bit longer. Um, but these would still look great. This is a good shape. And because they're longer on the outside, they would still give a little bit of life to deep set eyes. This is like a very safe lash. Like when in doubt, use a D wispy. <laughs> like it will always look good. I've never seen it not look good on anybody. Um, look down again a little more good. I like these. And then there's a lash. I'll link them to in the description. But there's a lash called 747. And I get them in short or extra short. S or XS. And they are similar to this in fluffiness and the fact that they look natural. But they're rounded like they're longer in the middle. So if, if somebody has downturned eyes, like your the corners of your eyes kind of go down or you want your eyes to look more open, I would use the 747s because they're more rounded. The DOSBs, because they're longer at the corner, on a certain eyes, they kind of make them look more downturned. But that's super rare. Probably doesn't even need to be mentioned, but because I like to tell you guys everything, that is that. How do they feel? Odd. Do they feel weird? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They, so what I've going. noticed about lashes, like you're super aware of them, right? It's yes. like they're there and you can kind of see yes. them. They get better once I put mascara. We're going to do your lips and we'll come back to the eyes. But once I put mascara, they feel a little bit more normal. But usually once the glue dries, you don't really notice them any more. But you probably will be aware of them. I don't know. <laughs> for they, someone who's <laughs> never had them, it, it is an odd sensation for sure. That is funny. Well, they look stunning. I'm excited for you to see them. <laughs> Fan you a little bit. Okay, and you can use the fan if you need to. Okay, for lips. So I love doing lips. I really love to like overline the lips and add a little bit of fullness and like shape them and stuff like that. Um, but because I want this to be like slightly more of a natural glam, I think we're not gonna do that today. So I'm not gonna do liner. I'm going to use just a lipstick and a gloss and we're gonna keep it like very soft and natural. Um, so I'm going to use my favorite lip shade currently. I'm gonna do Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury. So Pillow Talk, it's just such a great like rose toned nude pink. It's a very pretty. Um, it's not too warm. It's probably more neutral, I would say, like more of a rose tone. It's gonna come combine really pretty with her blush. It's like very much that tone. So we're gonna do that on her lips. And the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks are quite matte. The, I think the Pillow Talk is one of her matte revolution. And so if you do a very sheer later layer, it's kind of like um, it's not as opaque, so it almost appears more to be like a lip stain. So we're going to apply it that way. I'm not going to go too heavy. I'm going to pull out a little lip brush. And then we're going to top it with a gloss. So while you're doing that, Jules, I'll read a question. Okay. So then you can answer and do that. Angelique says, when would you use eyebrow gel? Okay, so um, question, Kelly read me a question. Um, when would you use eyebrow gel? So I use eyebrow gel if they have, um, like naturally their brows grow downward or they have very long brows or straight brows. So that's one reason I would use brow gel. I have clear. Um, I do it almost all the time on my brides. If I'm doing a bent makeup and we're like doing it in the morning, it has to last all day. I probably will always do brow gel because it's just one more layer of like setting things. And then I also do brow gel if I want to tonally correct. So I do this on blondes a lot. If I do their brows and they just aren't like 
warm enough. I'll do like Anastasia has a brow gel that is the caramel color. And that one's really good when people have sort of those caramel highlights. Like if you top the brow with it, it's almost like highlighting the brows, if that makes sense. So I would use it for that too. I love brow gel. I don't do it too much on my channel, but I do it on clients. Okay, so I'm just doing like a light layer of this. A lot of times um, people's natural lip color tends to sort of feather, like the inside of your lips will be more bright, like have more pink to them than like the edges. So I am extending Mundy's like lip line a little bit just to kind of match her, the color to where her natural lip is, if that makes sense. And then um, same thing. So I just put the Pillow Talk lipstick on this little disposable spatula. And I'm trying to do like a fairly sheer layer. I mean, it's not sheer, it's colorful, but if that, you know what I mean? Like more natural, not as opaque and defined. But this is such a pretty color. I'm glad Mundy said she liked pinks because this is gonna look good. And then we'll top it with a gloss and it's very, very natural. So up here, we're gonna just stick with her natural lip line. Go over here on the corner. Just sort of fill that in. Okay. Yeah, go Sorry. ahead. Sorry. Go, no, go ahead and blot it. That's like a natural thing. Yeah, that's natural <laughs> for everyone. No, you're totally good. No, it actually helps. It's good. You have like a little bit of lipstick. There we go. Okay, now we're going to do some gloss. So I really love, I love the Buxom glosses. They're so good. Um... I think I'm going to do pink champagne. So I'm debating Dolly, Buxom Dolly. It's so similar in tone to Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lipstick. So a lot of times I'll use that as the topper. Um, but I haven't really used this one much. So let's try it. So this is the, it's called pink champagne. So it's just more pink. It's like a little petal, like baby pink color. Like a ballet pink. So we're going to use that today. So same lip brush. And then we'll just top, give it a little bit of gloss. Whenever I want the lips to look like more soft, more natural, I always do a gloss because um, I feel like it adds a little bit of fullness but a little bit of softness. Like matte lips to me are a little bit more harsh. Okay, we need a little bit more. And this is a plumping gloss, so you'll feel like a little bit of tingly. It almost <laughs> kind of feels like minty, like menthol. I like the feeling, it's like subtle. Do you feel it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. I've had this Buxom glosses, all their glosses have that in them. And I have had friends that like love it too. And they'll just wear Buxom gloss like all the time. And they're like, I swear my lips like have gotten like a teeny bit bigger. Like just from wearing the, the tingly gloss all the time. <laughs> like, oh, perfect. That's great. Okay. That is looking good. Check in on the comments and then we'll add some mascara and then we'll show Mundy at the final look. Well, you're getting some heart, some heart emojis. <laughs> People are saying she looks beautiful with blush. She did. I love blush, guys. I'm glad blush is like having its moment because it's so flattering. Everyone loves your lashes. Oh, it, okay. And then your grandkids are commenting. They're like, ooh, fancy grandma. <laughs> That's a memory of saying. <laughs> that's so sweet. Well, I have 14 grandchildren. You have 14 so grandkids. I do. Ooh, that's so fun. <laughs> that's a lot. I mean, Okay, we're going to grab some mascara. Currently, today we're going to use the Maybelline Lash Sensation. I think this is one of Ulta's best sellers. So every time I buy new mascara, I'll like grab a new one too. And um, this one, I asked you guys what you liked. A lot of people said this one. And then it was like on Ulta's best seller list for a second. So I'm like, ooh, I'll try it. I like it. I'm going to have you look down. So what I'm going to do is just um, mesh her natural lashes into the false ones. And hers are blending pretty good, but sometimes people's like, they just grow in a different di direction than obviously the false lashes, or they're very, very blonde and they just look like weird under the lashes because the, the falsies are so black. Look up for me. So those are a couple reasons I do mascara. And I just feel like they feel better. Like Monday's natural lashes are now at one with the falsies. So hopefully they feel a little bit more natural to her. And I love bottom mascara. I just always do it. I don't like it to look too spidery. So I don't do a lot, but I just like a little bit of pop under there. And we didn't do, we didn't do eyeshadow under Monday's eyes. I think I'm going to add a little bit. 
Um, she has kind of like a, a very natural coloring under her eyes and there's like just a little bit of the smudge from the liner that I like. Because I like, usually I like some depth under the eyes. But the more you do, the more like made up you're going to look. So we're going to go back into this palette. We're going to go into the same color that we did in the crease, the one that is called crease. And we're going to go under the eyes. So this is actually a pretty simple look. We did, I think we only did two colors on your eyes today. So that's fun. And the eyeliner. You don't need to do, but I feel like... A lot of times people have a palette like this and they're like, okay, I need to use all 12 colors on my eyes today or whatever. Like a lot of times you only need like two or three colors. But if you want to use them, I'll have at it. Like makeup <laughs> is fun, but you don't need to. Okay. Um, all right. It's amazing how light-handed you apply everything. She looks gorgeous with minimal products. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Um, yes, I, it's fun. It's fun doing that na more natural. I mean, natural to me, <laughs> more like natural things because people are just already so beautiful without makeup and they don't need it. So it's fun to like enhance little things. I love it. That's what I love about doing makeup. Okay. Are you ready to see? I am. Okay, let's show her. <laughs> um, we're going to have Kelly. We're going to have producer Kelly flash Mondays before video. So you guys can get a refresher of <laughs> pre-made up Monday and then we will show her. The big reveal. Okay, we good? Okay, here you go. Oh my word. <laughs> I so like pretty. it. You look beautiful. I like it. It's very natural. Yeah, it is. I feel like it's very natural. That's why I love blush so much. I feel like you don't need to go in with all of these things. And even the eyeliner is really thin. Like it's just a thin line. The eyelashes are definitely different yeah you know yeah it's a different look for me because i have never you've never worn yeah, them i have never worn them and so it definitely but look how it makes my eyes pop out her stunning eyes right like yeah. the pretty and it's funny they look kind of greener right now they do like, which That's is funny because like, we started more blue yeah like they were so blue at the beginning and now yeah. i'm like oh they're totally like a green blue yeah yeah <laughs> Lashes I like it. are such fun. A, such an interesting look yeah, different. Totally so fun, different. you babe. You oh, look so pretty. Thank you. That's what I love. So I'm all, like all about lashes. I feel like they change the eyes. But it's so funny, like everyone's version of like what's like a heavy lash. Like because right. that's why I did the Demi Wispies on Monday because they're so natural. But I knew on Monday she'd be like, oh my gosh, that's like so like you just know. For me, the lash. oh yeah. yeah. For me, it's so much because I I never yeah, have. You never wear, so they're, you're probably like, oh, that's nothing. No, no, no. They, <laughs> no, but I get it. And they, they work really well with the look because they're mm -hmm. natural too. Like mm -hmm. I feel like we did natural all in her face. So if I did this crazy like doll lash, it like wouldn't go. Right. You know, so that's what I'm telling you guys. Deep wispies are like <laughs> lash. Like for a lot of you, maybe they're too natural, but I think they're great. I love them. They're like a must. Like I have literally a drawer full of them because they look good and they look good on Monday. Um, thank you for being my model. Thank it you. Was so fun. It was nice it's to meet you. It's been so fun. <laughs> it's been so fun. I was telling him earlier, you're. I never wore makeup because my mother always said your face tells your story, and. You know, every face is unique and different and every story is unique and different. And so I like my story. I like that I like donuts so my cheeks are a little more plump. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I laughed a lot. So I have these Aww. great <laughs> laugh lines and I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade that. Yeah, no, but I it love is that. fun to get all that. That is yeah, really fun. That's so like thank poetic. you so thank much. You. No, I totally agree. I love it. I think I, that's what I love about makeup. It's like embrace you. Like we're all beautiful. We don't need it, but it's like fun. It if is you want to be girly, if you want, like I love it. <laughs> but yeah, you were awesome, and you guys are awesome. Thank I love you. you. You guys are so awesome that tune in live. It's so fun to hang out with you. Um, but as always, this goes up as a replay. So if you're watching the replay. Hi. Um, and then I'll be live again on Thursday. So we'll see you guys then, usually 10 a.m. Pacific time. We start early today. But thank you guys. We'll see you on Thursday. Thank you.